Today is Tuesday, August the 17th, and we're going to take a quick run through what was a pretty bad day today on the market. Um, a lot of it had to do with the retail sales that were, were reported at um, 8.30. They were down 1.1% from what they were expected. That's the fickle consumer. Um, you know, it's, off, it's also you know, a factor of many things. But anyways, the McClellan Oscillator now... We, we were talking about this churning up here at the midpoint. We said when it's churned at the midpoint before, it's gone down. Here it went down. You know, here not so much. Um, but it did go down. And now it's gone down and it is testing the oversold area. We could see a bounce if we only look at the McClellan Oscillator. The Summation Index has taken another drop. And you can see this is a... A pretty poor chart because I used to have a, a trend line in here and I'm going to try to resurrect this chart with the trend line but the summation index is doing something really weird forget the fact that it's going down to zero um, don't know why that's happening but normally the McClellan index will make a very clean reverse but that is not happening now now we've had it going from for some time in this flat motion and now it's turned back down again we haven't seen that before in this 52 week period so we got to keep an eye open on that but let's take a look at the major indices the Dow Jones let's look at the one day the Dow Jones pulled back from its high you know touched uh, this green line that we had which was a previously closing high which really isn't relevant now because this is the new closing high, so we just pulled back. So what's the big deal? NASDAQ came close to its all-time high and pulled back again. What's the big deal? The S&P, what does it do? It pulled back to the last place we had the green line, but we should have had the green line here or here. So here would have been the last high before the new one. All it did was pull back a little bit below the previous high. So you know, we're talking about a 1% pullback in the NASDAQ. The thing is, if you look at Finviz, and we take a look at what the day did, the volumes were pretty good. And somebody pointed out on Twitter yesterday, the volumes yesterday were really high, were really high. So we've got better than average or average volumes, which, but look at decliners, three to one. But the market did pull up at the end of the day in all the three markets and pretty much everything was red. The only thing that wasn't was healthcare, the industrials, despite the, um, you know, the news of uh, the market being, the economy being productive and the stimulus, the industrials pulled back, which makes me, ah, what happened here? Which makes me happy that um, I, pu I, took, I pulled out of uh, Caterpillar. For some reason, I'm not connected. So let me just connect again. And let me do this. Okay, so here we go. The uh, Apple pulled back. No big deal. This is a doji. So in, in you know, no, no decision there. Um, Caterpillar, glad I pulled out of that one. Look, it dropped below the 50. And um, where was the Chiku Span? The Chiku Span was down here, but it's below the candles. Caterpillar is not one that I want to touch right now for a while. Glad we sold up here when we did. IBM holding the 50, that's a good sign. The banks, look at JP Morgan holding the 50. US Bank. Touching the 50, but then pulling back, getting support on the cloud. Neo, um, where was it today? Its low was right here. So where would that have been on the Chiku span? That would have been a Chiku span at the bottom of the cloud, getting support, and then moving back up. The Chiku span is a great one to be watching, but look at all of the stochastic indicators here. Both of them. The fast moving is deeply oversold, and the slow moving is also oversold as well. So we should be seeing 
a gradual return back for NEO. Still a stock that I'm holding, I'm confident regardless of some of the technicals. I'm not an in and out trader when it comes to some of my stocks and that would be NEO. Another one is Sava. Remember Sava, I sold the 125 calls going into this week, trying to get enough to recover back to 114, which was the move that I missed last week when my stock was taken at 110 by my short calls. So coming back to 114 was great for me. Unfortunately, we've gone all the way back to 97 this week, finishing the day today at 103.10 but my short 125 calls, if I hold them till Friday on a thousand shares, they're going to make $6,000 in profit. So that's fine for me. This is a stock that I, again, still believe in. Let's look at the Chico Span. Where is the Chico Span? It is right at the top, a little bit below, but right at the top of this candle. Again, this might indicate a little bit of a bump for Sava. It's also expecting some news before the end of the month. So that would be this week or next week. And the last stock we want to look at is Square, finished with a doji. Again, volume not important. In other words, I wouldn't worry about today. I haven't sold anything. What I bought was more AGNC preferred shares of the P category. And every time it takes a dip, I've been putting in Good till cancel orders at 25.10, 25.12, 25.15. These are preferred shares that have a face value of $25, redeemable value, and they pay over 6% dividend. So I've just been accumulating there, and now I'm up to 3,000 shares, buying 5,000 every time. I mean, I was at 20, the stock was at 25.40 and I put an order in for 25.12, you know what, it came back, but down to that, and then bounced back up to 25.30, came down to meet my 25.10. It seems like no order is going to go unfulfilled in that preferred share, which is fine with me. Um, so that's all for today. I'm not spooked out by today. I'm a little questioning the summation index, but I, as I've said in other videos, not really sure how to interpret it yet, um, but the stocks overall movement today and the market overall isn't really concerning me. The um, McClellan oscillator is a little bit shy of oversold where we normally see a bounce. Now here we saw a bounce and we moved up and then we moved lower. Here, we came down this far and then moved up, but typically this area here tends, so far this year, tends to be overshot, and then there's a major move back, and that's what I think is gonna happen again.